Right, now we're going to move ahead to an evergreen brand which has been part of our lives since most of our childhood. Uh, it is truly an honor to invite our next speaker on stage who is going to talk that how Colgate has been keeping up as being India's most trusted brand. And I would like to call on stage Mr. Arvind Chintamani, VP Marketing, Colgate Palmolive India Limited. Hi guys. Um, that was wonderful, Sushant. Uh, we've inspired a lot from the Jagare campaign. Uh, you guys you know, did stuff ahead of the time and you've led the way on many counts and uh, Shashwat as well. Terrific stuff from Airtel on uh, you know, something so challenging. I was listening to Shashwat and thinking, you know, if calls are dropping and data is growing at 300%, you know, the solution is to build a tower. If, you're, if you get bad breath, all you need to do is brush your teeth. And I was feeling so relieved about uh, the category I'm in. But, uh, you know, I've, uh, it's a privilege to represent a brand that I've been a part of uh, on a journey for the last 20 years, uh, uh, you know, across a few countries and disciplines, etc. And to talk about a topic on trust uh, that, you know, you don't learn at business school and there is no formula for it. And uh, somehow, this brand that, uh, you know, we're all a part of uh, the journey has done an incredible job of building over time uh, across scale that is absolutely incredible. Uh, and a few numbers just to get a sense of the scale that we're talking about. Colgate happens to be the most used brand in the world. If you just count the number of homes that buy a Colgate product, upwards of 60% in the world. But in India, the number's even more staggering. Almost 90% of this country buys a Colgate toothpaste every year, right? We're pretty much talking about everyone interacting with this brand. It is the most chosen brand across every single state, which is a lot of different food, a lot of different tastes, a lot of different languages, a lot of different gender relations, you know, politics, infrastructure, etc. a lot of variety. It's the most chosen brand in the rural parts of the country, in the Sambalpurs of the world, the South Delhi's of the world, you know, again, very different economics, etc. Every age group, you know, whether you're an infant, uh, milk teeth, uh, getting into permanent teeth, or a rebellious teenager looking for something more interesting than a boring toothpaste, or, you know, families looking to provide for, uh, you know, foundational oral care support uh, to their children. Or as you get older and, you know, your gums get inflamed easily or your teeth start hurting or they eventually, hopefully, you know, you lose a few, etc. It is chosen across, uh, the most chosen across every age group and across different socioeconomic classifications. And that is not easy. How do you over such a long period of time, uh, continue to remain trusted and chosen consistently across a variety of uh, preferences and types of people, etc. How do you, you know, retain this incredible amount of trust? It is quite boggling, even for us, as we, you know, sit inside the building, we don't plan to build trust on an everyday basis. So, you know, I, this is not a presentation I've made before. It's not very complicated. It's just, you know, sitting and looking at what the brand, the organization has done well over a period of time. And, uh, you know, trust, uh, we keep saying, uh, hard to build, easy to break. Uh, like someone said, you know, it's like a mirror. If it breaks, you can fix it, but there's always a crack in it. And so we respect it. We very deeply understand, you know, that once harmed, this is hard to get back. And so we do things a little more carefully, perhaps, uh, as a result of that. And if I were to just boil it down to three things, which I've tried to do, uh, that Colgate as a brand has done well over time, it would be speaking to culture well, changing as culture changes, and changing as business requirements change, while remaining consistent on some very core things. Starting with culture, you need to understand culture, and then you need to act on it, and then you need to change with it, right? So culture is easy to say and hard to do, 
when you're talking to every age group, every SEC in every town class for a billion people in the country. So I have a few ads. We'll you know, just look at them, uh, starting with this first one from sometime in the 90s. Uh, you, you know, you should enjoy this one. You see, as the sound comes on, you know, the expressions of women uh, at that time and, you know, what they wanted from, uh, you know, the marriage as far as it came to fresh breath. There's no sound. I bet it wasn't easy to put that on screen whenever it happened, right? Talking to your neighbor about your husband's bad breath, but revolutionary. And you know, one of the most successful ads for Colgate in that period. And it came, I guess, I wasn't there, uh, but from understanding what you could say as a brand and what people and you know, relationships were at, uh, at that point in time. Uh, you know, heading to the early uh, part of the new millennium, and you know, there was always a dentist. Uh, the dentist always sat at a particular angle at the desk. He always looked a certain way. He always picked up the toothpaste a certain angle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, you know, whoever did this uh, on the brand, you know, did this. And let's watch the ad. Ye hai mere papa, ye hai dentist. So an authority figure, you know, hard to reach, always a little distant, always knows more than me, uh, I should be scared of, suddenly became the parent. Right, a subtle shift, uh, but a clear understanding again of what authority meant and how the brand needed to become a little closer to the consumer and humanize the doctor into the parent. Uh, and again, was extremely successful in this period. Subtle, not realized, but this is where culture becomes hard. And then this is not very distant. This campaign ran, you know, I would say 2013 to 17. This is one of the ads, and I'll speak to it after. Uh, and it's about the mother and her code. Concerned mother, but too concerned mother? Magar mereko cavities ka dar hai. A mother who sits across from the dentist a little scared. Right? Felt right when we were doing it at that point in time. But as the country changed and women became, you know, more confident and we started understanding things a little better, you know, the internet was available. A mother who was ambitious, yes, but not so confident didn't feel right anymore, right? Worked at a point in time, but the country and society and, uh, you know, relationships keep evolving, and then we changed. And let's watch this one, and just 
think about the mother and her attitude. confident mother who, you know, realizes the kid is in some sort of trouble but just sits there and nods and smiles because she believes that the inner strength in her kid will take her through. Not so much the concerned mother, right? Subtle but a definite shift in how we have portrayed, uh, you know, our society and our consumer and our families in generations of advertising on the brand and that reflects the understanding of culture and then evolving with culture, right? That was the first, uh, oh, there's one more, yeah. This is, uh, let's just see this one. And again, speaking to, you know, changing. Uh, yeah, and this is sort of, uh, you know, the latest in the line of where we are uh, seeing uh, how the brand should be speaking in culture and, you know, it's a step forward, there is no toothpaste, there is no dentist, uh, right? And you heard that from Shishant previously, it takes some doing for a brand and I think that's what's held uh, Colgate in good stead uh, from a cultural point of view in changing with culture. So that was the first uh, of the C's. The second is, has been the ability of the brand and the organization to change and pivot as required. Uh, we are humans constantly changing. Just a few examples, you know, a beloved category in the country used to be a wonderful, profitable business for us, the tooth powder business, uh, very consciously pivoted as we started selling affordable toothpaste, giving away a toothbrush free with it, millions and millions of them to shift the consumer away from, you know, older habits into newer, more modern formats. Not easy when you're sitting on profitable uh, sources of revenue, right? A deliberate conscious change. We got attacked multiple times by competitors uh, as an organization. There were a lot of Me Too's, red and white, uh, copycat, minty, sweet uh, toothpaste. And you know, there came a point when we had to choose uh, which brands to fight these battles with. We could have chosen our flagship Colgate Red brand, but the choice was made to take Sibaka, a brand we'd acquired a while back, and use it as our value flanker. And it was a roaring success. It not only made Sibaka into a very strong brand in parts of the country, continues to be so, it fought off competition, but it also did not expose the Colgate Red brand to, you know, low cost, purely value oriented, uh, you know, businesses and competition. Leading trends, you know, this launched in 2005. We're talking a lot of naturals right now, but this was way ahead of the time. A time when and I was there when this happened, you know, every time we're sitting in the present, we think that all the change is happening now. I remember having conversations in 2000 and five on this and we felt all the change was happening then. And we talk about, talked about tradition is being repackaged, you know, naturals is getting modernized and all that stuff went in. And this happened 13 years back. Iconic brand, super successful in parts of the country, the number one toothpaste. A choice made before things had actually happened, right? Leading trends. Launch of whitening toothpaste into the country as we started seeing that People were getting more cosmetically oriented and how you looked had a material impact on your life. There was an openness to it. We came in with the idea of, you know, whitening toothpaste. So changing by leading and changing by responding, right? A massive wave of Ayurveda in the country, uh, you know, Colgate without a obvious uh, product in the portfolio on that front 
a very quick response. And now with uh, the Veet Shakti brand, one of the most successful launches that we've ever had. And responding as much as preempting uh, and the humility to change and accept and learn and do an essential part of the change fabric uh, of the brand that builds trust. You know, innovating formats, as we realized, uh, you know, the first thing people do when they have pain in their teeth is pop an analgesic. That continues to be the first recourse for people, right? And there are better ways. There are more direct, targeted ways. And we launched into formats uh, that heal dental pain. And again, you know, just taking one example of leading change before it's happened, uh, they're getting into the power toothbrush category, talking about how you can do brushing better, more strokes per minute, et cetera. So rushing through it, so I keep to time, but that was on change. And the first part was on culture and understanding it. The second part was the flexibility to pivot to preempt and to react. And the third piece is perhaps the hardest. Um, and you know the brand's done a great job of this, is consistency. And I'll just use one example and I'll run through with it. Uh, Colgate has a belief, uh, you know, as all organizations do, and at the heart of uh, the brand, we say that everyone deserves a future they can smile about. Everyone, and I spoke to the scale that the brand speaks to, and future to smile about, i.e. optimism, right? We believe at the core of the brand is a voice of optimism. And what's a great expression of optimism and feeling positive? A smile. And what we've done is put a smile at the heart of everything. And the, and the good thing that the brand has always done is consistently execute against one simple human emotion. We put it at the heart of our logo. Not an easy thing to do, right? We've changed our tagline and now we say in the not to optimism and a, being a voice and an encouragement to thinking positively, smile karo or shuru ho jao. We've changed our packs. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, that's a smile. In case you hadn't noticed, but our packs have now got a smile on them, right? We've taken it and put it everywhere in our communication, wherever it matters, not just in what you hear and what you see uh, in the story as well. And we are you know, speaking increasingly to the idea of optimism. We'll watch a video. Uh, you know, we've got multiple of these going out as we speak but let's see one of them. and many other stories of optimism. Uh, and of course, we've taken it on the ground, the smile, uh, you know, in dealer boards across the country. This is uh, in Vikram Jyot, uh, the Santosh Kirana store, where we've put the proprietor Santosh here and say, Santosh ji ki muskan, Vikram Jyot ki shan. And, you know, it's only when you go across touch points consistently, consistently with a message that you get it. This is a wall painting in uh, the village Parana, where you know, we're encouraging the village to smile, muskurate raho parana, and so on in 20,000 villages across the country. The message is identical. It goes on to activations, integrations, whether our, 
you know, there are reality TV uh, shows uh, where, you know, things are getting started or, you know, the festival of cricket where customized smile messages for every team were put out. Uh, you know, the consistency across communication. And the last thing I'll leave you with is, uh, you know, Shushan spoke about this as well. No longer enough to communicate, uh, never was, I believe. Uh, you know, we have been doing a lot of work on the ground and now under the Keep India Smiling mission, the launch of a Keep India Smiling scholarship which encourages people to apply and get support uh, and mentorship uh, from people like Mary Com, uh, you know, to make uh, futures that they believe in and they're finding it hard to and a lot of uh, help being provided. Uh, we've been doing stuff consistently. The Bright Smiles, Bright Futures program since 1976 consistency of 160 million people touched already, the oral health month since 2004, without a break, 40 million uh, dental checkups, et cetera, et cetera. You know, long running programs against a common, uh, common objective. And uh, I'm over time, so we'll skip the video. Uh, but that was uh, my story on Colgate uh, in a jiffy. Uh, on how trust across scales, which are incredible, take a lot of doing, but at the heart of it, uh, culture, changing, consistency, uh, for us are the primary three things. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, I'm sure that each and everyone in the audience surely smiled at least once during your presentation. Well, I would like to invite Mr. Ravi Varma, the branch head North Sales from Wickerton Group to please come and present the token of gratitude to Mr. Arvind. Thank you so much.